of course, this brings me down to a question of what should we do then mm -hmm. if there is a sign mm -hmm. of something like that? You know, we're concerned about that yeah. person. What should we do um, if you think something is going on or mm -hmm. you suspect some sort of mm -hmm. abuse? Um, well, probably the first thing that you should do, uh, especially if you have a relationship with a young person, is talk to them mm -hmm. uh, directly. And, and you don't have to wait to figure out, you know, what the underlying problem is. Is this an alcohol or drug problem or mm -hmm. is it, you know, some other type of problem? It's focus on what you see, yes. you know, and talk about those mm -hmm. changes. You know, if you see that a student, you know, is coming in late or you have a young person who's coming home late or you see that their friends change mm -hmm. um, or you see them doing things different, maybe they're, you know, drawing different or, or the change of friends, whatever it is, uh, sit down and have a conversation with them about it. Uh, but be careful. Um, think a little bit about what you're going to say. Yeah, what should we plan to say? I know that mm -hmm. it looks always looks so perfect on TV. They always have the right well, thing to say and... You know, I love my child, but yet I'm concerned. Yep. So is there something that you can plan to say to them? or? I think, yeah, planning is really important, kind of mm -hmm. thinking through what you're going to say and then making sure you're doing it in a time and place when you're in a good place, both uh, environmentally, I guess, physically, in a good location, and emotionally, mm -hmm. that you can talk about it. But sure. I think you talked about one of the first things, you mentioned it right there, is tell tell you tell the young person that you care yes you know however you, you know you're comfortable doing that if it's your child let them know that you love them mm -hmm. uh, if it's someone that you have a connection with let them know how important they are to you uh, sometimes it might be if you're in a position to be a coach or a leader of a of a youth group it might be because they're an important part of that group mm -hmm. and you let them know that they're they're important to you I mean sometimes it might be just giving them some uh, special attention I mean, it going, maybe if it's comfortable going out to coffee with them, that might be a good way of letting them know that you care and, mm -hmm. and also picking a good time and place to talk. Mm -hmm. And then focus on the things that you see. I mean, really be specific. These are the things that I see. I see, you know, that you've been coming home late. I see that your friends have changed. Your grades have dropped. Uh, pick out the three or four things that are really kind of that you've noticed really really specifically and be careful not to jump to any conclusions about mm -hmm. what it is it could be very different than than what you think it is sure. so just focus on that and I tell people be as specific as you possibly can okay. um, be careful about using words always or never okay. you're always coming home late well then you're in an argument over what always is or mm -hmm. you're never doing this and then you're in an argument over what never is so just be careful about the, the words that you choose mm -hmm. um, and try to begin with I statements like sure. I care I see. And then the next thing is to let them know how you feel mm -hmm. uh, in this situation. You may be worried. You may be concerned. You may be angry. Mm -hmm. But to let them know uh, very succinctly how you're feeling and to try and do it in one word, not a long explanation. And part of what that does is it starts to let uh, the young person in this case know that you're talking to, that what they're doing is starting to affect someone else. Mm -hmm. And that, um, because as we talked about, they're very often good at hiding it. Yes. And so that they think that what they're doing really isn't affecting anyone else. Mm -hmm. By letting them know how you feel, that's one way of letting them know that, no, what you're doing is starting to affect someone else and, and people are noticing. Mm -hmm. And then listen. Mm -hmm. And just, you know, um, and I tell people when you get to the listening part, try to use all your good listening skills, you know, in terms of good nonverbals and asking questions if you need to. Uh, but I tell people, be prepared. Yeah. You pick the time and place, they may have absolutely nothing to say. Mm -hmm. It may be dead silence. And it may just feel, you know, really awkward. But sometimes you have to let that silence go for a while. Mm -hmm. Or um, they could get very angry at you and mm -hmm. say, I don't care what you think. I don't care what you feel. It's none of your business, yeah. you know, what I do. Or they could turn around, depending on the situation, and dump a whole load on you, depending yeah. on, you know, what's going on either in their family situation or at school. And you didn't know all of that stuff was, was going on. So I just tell people to be prepared. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we'd like to always do this perfectly, but very rarely is a young person going to say, well, thank you very much for sharing <laughs> your concern. I'll change my behavior. Yes. You know, but we'd like that mm -hmm. to, be the, to be the outcome, mm -hmm. and it, it rarely is. So be prepared for those other things, and it may take more than one conversation. And then the, the, the latter two parts, you know, depending on what, how they respond, is to let them know what you want. Mm -hmm. um, you know, is, okay, it seems like, yes, this is a, a bigger issue, and I, I want you to see someone. Mm -hmm. And then let them know what you're willing to do to help. Sure. Um, I'm willing to go with you, mm -hmm. you know, to see the counselor at school. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll do that. Um, they may have, again, if they have nothing to say, well, it, 
just letting them know, well, I want you to know that I'm willing to listen to you, you know, at another time. So the I want and I will go together in terms of kind of this is an opportunity to state your expectation about what you'd like the behavior to be and that you're willing to do something. You're willing to support them in some way to make that change. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Yeah. And that you love them unconditionally, too. And that's yeah. very important yes. for I, them I, to know that, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think you can, you know, tell young people that enough. Right. I mean, I, I think that mm -hmm. that's probably absent, uh, probably too much for us for, as adults as well as young people that we don't get told often enough that people really do care mm -hmm. about us. Yeah. And so, yeah. And another thought that I had too was the fact that no matter what they're going through, that you're willing to go through with them mm -hmm. and that you want a better life for them. Mm -hmm. And you want to catch them beforehand mm -hmm. because that is the goal as a parent too is you're raising your children to have a better life, and you want to see them go down this path. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and the other hard thing is, is that sometimes um, we don't have a lot of sometimes credibility as adults in terms of the social life of mm -hmm. young people, so sure. we don't always kind of know everything that's going on, and in many cases we don't. But we do have some kind of general idea of what it was like to be a teenager and mm -hmm. some of those struggles, you know, if we can kind of, you know, think back. And, and yeah, what we're, we're trying to do is we're trying to help them avoid people. I tell a lot of the people that I, that I work with is that I did some risky, foolish things as mm -hmm. a teenager. And I don't want other young people to do those risky, foolish things. Mm -hmm. um, there could have been a number of things that could have happened to me where I could have gotten hurt or injured or killed yeah. in terms of the things that I did. And I don't want a lot of young people to experience that. So that's... It's one of the things that motiva motivates me to try and prevent some of the, these things from happening to young people. Right. And we all make mistakes, and yet we mm -hmm. learn by them, you know. Yeah. But thank goodness sometimes they're not life-threatening or they don't kill a friend or themselves as well. Mm -hmm. And so that's what's really important. But open up that communication, and yes, you may get the door slammed on you a few times. Right. You may get a few swear words. Yeah. And sometimes no one wins. But if someone dies or someone actually uses the drug and they do pass on, then you've already lost. Mm -hmm. So let's take this preventative mm -hmm. measure. And I used to say to him, I don't know, as the saying goes is, you know, don't hate me for loving you too much. Mm -hmm. that's, that's a good saying. Yeah. 